Women of Reddit, what hobbies do you find unattractive in men? I once asked a guy what his favorite hobby was on our first date. His answer was dating. He was clearly talking about carbon dating. Guy was just an aspiring archaeologist. When I was a teen I was hanging out at an after-school club at the library for nerds and this girl walked up to me and asked me out, I was contemplating it then she blurted out, I just don't like being single. I kinda gave her this wide-eyed look and said something like I, uh, think I'm good. And walked away. Yup. Desperation is a huge turnoff no matter who you are or what you look like. Like once we are together and I see little signs of how desperate you are to be around me that is cute. And entirely different. I don't really care tbh, as long as you're not the type that insists that we do absolutely everything together. I like my alone time and I already have my own hobbies. I'm not gonna change for you, and I don't want you to change for me. That's the worst and it can be so insidious because people can gaslight you for having a hobby that you choose to, sometimes, do without them. I joined a Dungeons and Dragons game my friends were running, we'd play once a month for about 6 to 8 hours and every time I got home my then wife would clearly be angry, though it took her forever to admit what it was about. She eventually came to one of the sessions and discovered that we actually played the whole time. Her assumption had been that we only played for 2 to 3 hours and I just spent the rest of the time sitting around with my friends chatting and drinking beer. I got an apology, but it also took me looking back on the marriage afterwards to realize that even if we had done that it should have been okay. This was literally one of the only things I ever did without my ex the whole time we were together. It wasn't even that I didn't want her there, she just didn't think she enjoyed Dungeons and Dragons, spoiler alert, once she tried it, she did, though ironically it's one of the ways she got close to the guy she ended up leaving me for, so I guess that one's on me. Yup. You hang out with your friends in person once a month. That should not be a big deal at all. I mean we saw them more often than that, we were party of a weekly board game night group that was where I met the group I played Dungeons and Dragons with, but yeah the point stands, some people are just crappy about being willing to let other people do what they want. It was just the way that relationship went, a lot was imbalanced. I have a guy at work who for some reason loves to go in great detail about his triathlon training routine, and how frustrating it is that even though his wife knows he needs to get his 67.5 minutes of riding and a 2 km swim in each afternoon she still bugs him to help with their kids. That woman deserves a chest full of medals for not stabbing him in a murderous rampage each night. To people like this. Don't have kids if you don't want to take care of them. Yep. I am training for an event currently, but what that means for me is that I have to wake up at 4.30 to get workouts and before the kids are awake. You don't get to just dump your actual workload onto someone else so you can pursue a hobby. My wife and I both like to train. We have two kids so we just take turns. She loves working out in the morning so I wake up with the kids and I would rather work out in the evening and that's when she will take over for me. It works out pretty well. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm glad you guys have a system that works. I respect you, different vibe for me I got a dog so I have to get up at 4 before work so I can gym then walk the little guy. Gambling. R slash Wall Street bits and shambles. To be fair it always is. Can confirm. Pre GameStop stock it was a pretty great place in my opinion. You could get decent DD there in that era, and as long as you didn't follow the lotto ticket strategy, could do pretty well. I actually made money there before GME lol. Mostly because we were in a bull market for a couple years, but the DD was usually solid back then. It's hilarious how DD now just means wild conspiratorial shit I made up based on a child's understanding of finance. Praying no one says amateur radio. The fact it hasn't been mentioned can only mean it's a definite panty dropper. My husband is a ham. When we were dating I studied for and got my tech license to understand and share in his hobby a bit. Now I can speak somewhat intelligently when he starts talking about it. He's pretty game to watch my Jane Austen period romance movies with me in return. We have our own channel we agree upon in case of emergency that we call the love channel and practice on it now and then. I got him a hat with his call sign on it and he got me a shirt with mine, we wear them when we go to ham events. He's always buying and selling radios but comes out pretty even, and I know when we buy a house one day we'll have a giant tower slash antenna in the backyard. He's so cute when he gets excited about hitting other states and countries on HF. Ham radio is a cool hobby, and worth looking into if your partner likes it. As a radio amateur myself, that is hands down the most romantic thing I've ever read. I hope to find my love channel him girl, or at least accepting of our hobby, one day too, but they're far in between. It's not about what hobby they do. 
as long as they are passionate about it and aren't assholes or gatekeepers about it, everything is good. Will my hobby is gatekeeping gatekeeping. I bet you couldn't even name 5 gates. My favorites are, Stians, of Babylon, Nor, the 9th, and Melinda. Edit, thanks for the awards. The comments section of this could not be more perfect. Chef's kiss. You misspelled Steins. Are you even a real gatekeeper? Are you really gatekeeping gatekeeping gatekeeping? Someone's gotta do it. But for a hobby? Well no one is going to pay them for it. Working. I'm not even lying, I met a dude once whose only hobby is working. When he's at work, he works. And when he's at home, he also works. And during holidays, it's also him and his PPT plus Excel sheets. Man can't even watch an entire movie without typing away on his financial report. And when there's no work, he becomes extremely grumpy. I have a rule that I won't ever become bored enough in my personal life that I pull out my work computer. My rule is if it isn't during my 8 to 5 it's not my problem. My general rule is that I never have anything work related on my personal devices. I refused to download Teams on my phone for the longest time at my last job, and the only reason I eventually caved was so my coworker could message me to let me know whether or not I had to waste 30 to 40 minutes commuting that morning, there were regular tech issues and sometimes they just had us work from home if they felt like they'd be paying us to do nothing. Right now the only work related thing on my laptop is an excel sheet that I send to my manager when I want vacation time, and I only consider that tangentially related to work since it's used to give me time off. This. In my previous job, I had everything on my mobile phone. I would keep checking emails at non-work hours and lose sleep. In my current job, I decided I'm not going to do that. There is absolutely nothing so urgent about my job. If there is, my colleagues know to call me up. Honestly? Crypto. I could make an exception if they clearly know what they're doing. But most people who are super into cryptocurrency to the point where it's their entire personality are falling for scams. If all of the world's scams were packed into a department store, MLMs would be the pink girl toy aisle, and cryptocurrency would be pretty much the same thing, but painted blue in the boy toy aisle. So many scams out there. My significant other got really into crypto for a while. Put thousands of dollars into it, tried to convince me to do it too, lectured me about it being the future and how I should be investing and listening to him because he did his research. So I put like, $100 into Dogecoin because whatever, I'm gonna lose it all anyway. He got annoyed with that because I wasn't taking it serious enough. Then he lost all his money and I made $1000. It's all just a dumb lottery. <coughs> Collections of belly button mints. <coughs> Day drinking. Being married slash in love with a high functioning alcoholic is soul crushing. Sending you some love. My husband was a functioning alcoholic for like 25 years and now we're dealing with his sobriety plus having relapses and it's really hard. You can PM me anytime if you need to. I'm having a drink right now at 9 am, thinking about going to the hospital next week to detox. Me and my wife get along fine most of the time but I hope I don't become a asshole when I'm sober. The biggest thing is self-awareness. If you can least recognize your being an asshole you can apologize. Keep your self-awareness and you'll get through it. But also make sure that your apologies are followed by effort to be better. Apologies are hollow without corrective actions. I once dated someone where every time we went on a bike ride, he would constantly tell me what gears to use and tried to tell me how to put air in my tires, and that I was riding my bike all wrong. Every single time, the entire time. He basically made me sound like I was an idiot and that he was a bike expert. He blew out his tires almost every time we went on a ride together. I told him, just don't put so much air in your tires, nope he just kept going on and on about how he was an expert and watched me like a hawk when I was riding my bike. Telling me to watch my chain, what side of the street to ride on, when, when to turn, how to sit, my posture, my tires, he tampered with all my lights. My gears. He took my bike apart, and it was never the same after. He tampered with my brakes so they barely worked. He then left my bike outside and it got stolen, after he went on about bike locks and which one I should use. Anytime we rode out together it was a huge lecture, like I was a child. It's not the hobby. It's how he assumed that I didn't know anything about riding my bike, even though I kept telling him to stop. My bike became his bike, and he took over a hobby I used to enjoy. Holy shit this sounds like the plot of a Seinfeld episode. As much as I like anime and manga, I will admit if I meet a guy and in their public space in their home they show their hentai posters and figures, I'd be a little worried. 
anime in general is not the issue. Anime fans and hentai fans are different breeds. The latter almost always overlaps with the former, but some of us are just trying to enjoy some cartoons and shit. I don't even mind they consume the latter, as long they don't act creepy about it. I don't even know how some people can be so passionate and open about liking hentai. It's like porn, everybody likes it and there's nothing wrong with that, but you normally don't go around parading your fetishes and talking about it like it's your firstborn child. I always compare it to stuff like taking a shit, we all do it, but it's something private that you keep to yourself, to yourself and your sexual partners when it comes to sex, it's extremely weird to talk about it with other people you don't have enough closeness with. And I find it normal others would find it a bit repulsive or at least, weird, in either case when you share it like it was something casual. Any hobby that makes your loved ones feel like overlooked shit. My significant other has missed anniversaries and birthdays to attend long distance Warhammer tournaments. Usually he hates travel, so we've never gone anywhere for ourselves. The honeymoon he promised 13 years ago never happened and we've never been on any romantic trips together. I love travel and bonding over new experiences, but he doesn't care unless it's a tabletop game. I've played Gloomhaven and a lot of other games to make him happy. X-Wing was pretty fun, but it sucks when there's no reciprocation for my interests. Edit to add, just checked back in during my break and apparently my inbox exploded, so. I'm grateful for all the reassuring comments and those of you who are offering helpful suggestions, even if it's just to pack up and leave, as long as you're not a total ass about it. Unfortunately real life is not that simple, the life we've built together is still important. I do love him and he says he loves me. He's not some abusive monster like some of you seem to think, we're just different people who have grown apart over the years. It happens. I don't know if we'll work through it or not, but he has made some efforts lately to find some local activities we can both enjoy. I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can while also focusing on my own needs instead of his. That includes returning to school and getting a better job if I need to support myself alone. He's been supportive of that and I'm excited for next semester. That sounds rough. I'm getting into tabletop games and painting and I see it healthy so far but never want it to get in the way of real life things. It's all about balance. For me, it keeps me out of trouble and it indoors often. I used to be out and about doing all sorts of shit and now I don't mind spending Friday painting a new figure or two and laying low. It sounds like he really likes and looks forward to his tournaments. I hope you figure out a way to see eye to eye. That's very kind, thank you. I don't really mind the games themselves, and X-Wing was genuinely fun. It's more about the prioritization and lack of effort in my interests. Luckily I have extremely good friends who will travel with me and try new things. That keeps me going for now. A couple of years ago I would have said being a gym rat. Now I'm dating one and he's just a massive nerd that likes sharing neat facts about muscles. And I'm really into nerds so RIP. LOL I love the idea that a gym bro is really just a muscle nerd. Basically every person into their hobby is a nerd about it. The captain of the football team was a nerd about football. The only thing that makes someone a stereotypical nerd was the type of content or their personality. Degenerate investing aka gambling all our fucking money away. I'd rather marry the guy who enjoys Pokemon, watches anime, or likes to bake. Hell, I'd rather date a guy who is a straight up pothead as long as he can still function well. IDC what you do. You can fish on weekends, you can go hunting, you can drink beer and chill with your friends. Anything is fine with me as long as it isn't going to ruin our lives. But I'm never fucking dating another person, man or woman or non-binary, that is fucking awful with money. Splurging or going into manageable debt is fine, but don't fucking ruin us. Same goes with something like a severe drug addiction. Sounds like someone was dating a Wall Street that's degenerate. Seriously thought this was a response to the Tifu dude who just lost $7,000 of his GF's money on Bed Bath Beyond stock. Oomph. My friend is quickly realizing their new brother-in-law is a wannabe finance slash investment bro who thinks he knows how to invest just BC he browses a bunch of investment subreddits. Amongst other things, he somehow conned them into investing in this dilapidated property. They overpaid for it and with the amount extra they're putting in to renovate it, thanks to poor vetting of contractors, they'll be lucky to break even anytime soon. A lot of guys confuse investing for gambling and bad business sense. Serial killing, I guess. Not a woman of reddit, but cockfighting. We brought our kids to a birthday party. We got there early so my wife could help set up. So us dudes are hanging out. The homeowner decides to show us something awesome. It was not awesome. As soon as these birds see each other, it's on sight. I didn't know chickens could get so angry. 
and they put razor blades on their feet to make it go quicker. I felt sick. Instant panic attack. Like WTF. This guy had at least 50 birds leashed up like dog fighting dogs. It's been years and I'm still shook. Damn dude, what country do you live in where some guy felt comfortable casually showing y'all his fighting rooster collection? At a kid's birthday party no less. It was only the guys. Kids didn't see. But, it's def not something you mentally prepare for when going to a 5 years old's BA party. What about a man with no hobbies? Don't like sports or video games or hunting or gambling or TV, I think my wife gets bummed that I don't really do anything for myself anymore. It probably doesn't help that I don't hang out with anyone either, my three closest friends moved out of state within the last three years and all family is out of state too. I work on our house while I'm not working on other people's houses and do chores and hang with our 17 mo baby and 13 yo, when he'll allow it, nobody will probably read this, but feeling like a total loser lately. Edit, wow, so many words of encouragement, not gonna lie my eyes are definitely a little teary. Thank you to everyone for your kind words and please know that they have really made a big difference in my perspective of myself. I'm calling some friends tomorrow, planning a date with my wife and making an appointment with a therapist. No going back to that sad guy again. Love you all. You're definitely not a loser. But it sounds like you might be neglecting your own needs. And that you miss your friends. The things you do with your family are so great and admirable, but do give yourself permission to have a hobby or whatever it is you wish to do. Take a trip to see your friends, join a club, start a hobby. Let yourself have a moment for yourself. You feeling like this will not do good for anyone, you deserve to feel happy and I bet your family wants that too more than anything. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below and while you're at it, drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, have a blessed day.